And the entire ordeal led Beata Kowalski to take her own life in January 2017. And the Kowalski family is blaming Johns Hopkins for her death. They're suing for $220 million. Right now, crews are pulling in the wreckage of the plane right behind me here. They're pulling it into the Heigl Park, and they're going to lift it out of the water with a crane, after which they will transport it to the NTSB Center in Jacksonville. Organizers for the event tell me around 60 international races teams and drivers are coming to Sarasota this weekend to show off their boating skills and thousands of spectators with lots of money to spend are also coming to see them do just that. Sarasota police say the driver first crashed into a pole and then his vehicle careened into this business. Luckily there were no pets inside but the ongoing renovations to the business are now set back. We have been out here all day looking to see if there's any possibility of law enforcement activity here so far we haven't seen any as the FBI and the local police, as you said, continue searching for Brian Laundry over at the Cartoon Reserve. But so far, uh, we're getting some more information now about some of the people who saw Gabby Petito just before her death. Most of the supplies in this hangar go towards relief efforts in Caribbean countries like Haiti. A lot of it is also going to missionaries who live there. This kidnapping, though, is likely going to change the way they live and the way they do their mission. Work. And law enforcement uh, led by FBI along with uh, search and rescue teams have been coming through the Carlton Reserve for the past six days now. They're hoping to find Laundry so that they can ask him some of those questions that they have and he can tell them exactly what he knows about Gabby Petito's death. First this morning on the stand was a pediatric and forensic psychiatrist who evaluated the Kowalski family after Maya stay at the hospital and after her mother died of suicide. Here in Sarasota County, lawyers for the Laundry family filed a motion Monday. They're trying to block a letter written to Brian Laundry by his mom, Roberta, from being entered as evidence. While in court documents in Grand County, Utah, lawyers there say they have new information about how police contributed to Gabby Petito's cause of death. Yes, I have seen a few people wearing masks here, and that's because the stench of a dead fish has overpowered the air here. And red tide conditions are improving in some places, but you can see by the sight of it is practically empty here at Lido Beach. The conditions still remaining poor, and you can see here the dead fish littered up and down the coast here at Lido Beach. It's not a comforting sight for people vacationing and tourists and business owners alike are telling me that they're feeling the pinch. Division for Crimes Against Children say they got involved once the child came forward to a family member. Now detectives say they are concerned that there may be other victims. Investigators are back at the reserve today. What are they still looking for? We have seen investigative teams go in and out of the park. You can see one of them standing by here at the entrance of the park. And the teams include from the FBI, the Northport Police Department, as well as the Pasco County Sheriff's uh, Office. And they include cadaver dogs as well. And they're all trying to find out more clues that can help them determine who the partial human remains belongs to and what else could be left on the park's premises. So it's a vicinity that is very familiar to law enforcement. But again, as we were told by the FBI official yesterday, this is an area that had been previously submerged in water and an area that search crews have been unable to get to until now. All right, Adurea Atumba, thank you so much. We appreciate it. There are 31 freight containers stacked like Lego bricks to make this firehouse. It allowed firefighters to experience different simulated scenarios for their fire and rescue training. For example, a fully kitted firefighter as big as Anthony here can make his way through a hole as small as this. Starting tomorrow, look out for these bright yellow Teslas. They're offering point-to-point -point rides from places in downtown Tampa. Think of them as your modern-day yellow cabs, only this time they're all electric-powered and right here in downtown Tampa. This year, there is no petting zoo because they had an incident last Sunday involving one of the staffers of the petting zoo uh, mishandling the remains of a baby goat. But the organizers say not to worry. They still have lots of alive 
live animals that kids can interact with and get to learn a lot about farm life and the agriculture industry. And um, I've got one more treat here for my friend here. Let's try it. And then here. Okay. All right. Oh, he got it. All right. Now, reporting live in Sarasota, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay. Aduria, you are brave there. Maya Kowalski was only 10 at the time of her ordeal, now 17. She says she recalls vividly how she was treated differently from other children at the hospital and in her own words, stripped from her family. I was a ballerina at one point. I was a gymnast and then a figure skater. Maya Kowalski describing what life was like before she was diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome. It's like I was born with gasoline deep within my body and some incident, whether it was that sprained ankle or the severe asthma attack, was like a match and acted as a catalyst that just set my body on fire and I have to live with this burning pain. And taking jurors through a timeline of her illness before her diagnosis from the first symptoms around 2015. The family even seeking treatment in Mexico before she ended up at Johns Hopkins All Children's in October 2016. None of the doctors knew what was wrong with me at the time, so they just assumed that strengthening my muscles would maybe help get me to walking again. Maya was sheltered at the hospital under DCF orders and kept from her family for 87 days. When I expressed to them a symptom or like my pain, they would say, no, you're making it up or it's in your head. And then there was the social worker. At one point, the social worker, Kathy Beatty, said that my mom was in a mental institution. They were trying to even manipulate me into thinking that my mom was sick and therefore making me sick, even though it wasn't true. Mom Beata accused of child abuse, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, and over-medicating her with ketamine, later taking her own life wearing a bracelet Maya made. I found out later that she wore it every single day and when she was found in the garage she was still wearing it <laughs> and i have it on my neck right now it was actually so unbelievably cruel the amount of time they allocated for me to spend with my family after hearing such awful news and tonight, the hospital continuing to maintain that its staff was only acting on DC of orders, following those orders, and acting in the interest of the child. Now, tomorrow, testimonies do continue here at the Sarasota Court. The family, Kowalski family, that is, suing for $220 million. Live in Venice, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay. After waking up to an alarming text message Saturday about Hamas's terrorist attacks in southern Israel, Gillian Kay says she's been on edge ever since, constantly looking for news about the people of Kibbutz Naraz. My stepson, Sagi, who lives there with his wife, Avital, and their two kids. She's also pregnant and due in December. Um, my stepson, Sagi, is missing. According to Kay, Sagi was last seen by his pregnant wife and children, securing them in a bunker, and then seen fending off the terrorists during the hours-long siege. Tonight, 240 of the community's 400 residents are either missing or were killed. Sagi's status is unknown. We're desperately trying to find out, like so many other families, where he is, what happened to them, is he in Gaza with Hamas? Sagi's family eventually rescued and, along with survivors, evacuated. Tonight, Kay's husband is in Tel Aviv trying to find his son. Just to get information, to know that Sagi is okay, of course, to bring him home, but to know he's okay, we know how strong he is. He's strong, heart of a lion. This must be traumatizing for you and the family. I can't even imagine what they're what they're feeling right now, having witnessed it, having been there, having had to walk outside their homes and see bodies on the ground, people they know, they love, they grew up with. What is your widest hope for this situation? What a great question. My hope is that in some way, young people, old people, Palestinians, Israelis, I don't care who they are, will stop dying because this hate just breeds more hate. In Sarasota, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay.
This recent kidnapping is yet another symptom of a growing security concern in Haiti. And local missionaries who work with and depend on agape flights are not exempt from that danger. The gang violence has made my life miserable. This has been going on ever since they killed Job No Moe's. Mark Stocklin has lived in rural Haiti for 15 years, operating the Haiti Bible Mission. It can take his team between six to eight hours to get to supplies in the main city, Port-au-Prince. As the last two years have seen a rise in violence and kidnappings, he stepped up security to protect the vulnerable mission compound and escort vehicles. I have a bulletproof SUV and uh, we have to pay armed guards and Haitian military, you know, SWAT with AK-47s and, you know, AR-15s to take us to Port-au-Prince because that's it's too dangerous to go through port. Because of the work you do interacting with the local population there, it sort of makes you a moving target, right? For me, it just makes me realize that every time my kids go downtown, I just need to make sure that, you know, there isn't some informant, you know, calling somebody, hey, there's a white kid here, there's, you know, a family here. So, but I always have to be ready. And that, that puts a little stress just knowing, just knowing at any moment something could happen, I guess. Kidnappings and abductions are not unusual these days in Haiti. Uh, it's really, Port-au-Prince is known now as the kidnap capital of the world. Venice-based Agape Flights is dubbed a lifeline for the missionaries with its multiple supply and shuttle runs. Last year, a mob mistook their plane for one of the gangs and set it on fire. We really try to help our missionaries understand that they have to be very cautious in their movements, but they've been called to be there. And so many of our long-term missionaries who have been in Haiti for 40 plus years understand there is still hope for Haiti. Kenya's president wants to send 1,000 police to help neutralize the gangs and keep the peace. The Haitian people are hurting, but it also takes a toll on us because the money that we would have to help people, it's costing us three times more to do what we used to do. In Venice, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay. There are traces of that incident from last night, including this bullet hole here on the sun. And if you follow me over here, you can see yet another bullet hole on this wall. It's just another extreme example of what neighbors say is a growing concern about short-term rentals in their neighborhood. It was around 12.30 that I wake up to all this screaming, loud noise, and then all of a sudden there is a shotgun, and it was so scary. Bam, bam, bam. Neighbor Manuel Chipote said he'd heard at least six gunshots coming from guests at a party at this home on Jackson Drive. The party had spilled onto the streets, and in the 30 years that he's lived here, he said he had never seen anything like it. I live two houses from here. And it was very, very loud. And I was scared. I said, my gosh, what's going on now in our peaceful neighborhood? Police say the incident happened around 1 a.m. with two people taken to a local hospital with minor injuries. Monday morning, a police drone searched to see if there was any injured person unaccounted for. Neighbors say their community is being overrun by short-term rentals or what they call hotel houses. They have reduced the number of people to be only 12. But there's houses with big swimming pools, parties. Is like 30 people that come in there and disturbing our residential neighborhood peaceful life that we have had. It's absolutely unacceptable to come somewhere that isn't your home and to disrespect our city. Sarasota police say the incident is isolated and rare, especially for a vacation rental. They say this is the only shooting incident on Lido Key this year. That just shows you how rare of an occurrence a shooting in the middle of the night on a Sunday of all nights um, is to occur there. Neighbors hope this would spur tighter regulations that would place restrictions on short-term rentals. Someone could have been killed. Innocent bystanders, innocent people that is taking care of their business, being shot in the street for nothing. In Sarasota, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay. With just three weeks on the job, Sarasota's new superintendent says he's ready for school. It has been a wonderful transition. It's been a very supportive community. He's new to the position after his predecessor, Brennan Asplin, made a surprise announcement that he was stepping down last year. Asplin butted heads with the school board over issues he said were driven by politics and the pandemic, all of which played out publicly at school board meetings. The new superintendent hopes for a smoother tenure leading the district. It's going to take some time to come in and listen and learn. Uh, I think it's incumbent upon any effective leader to understand the strengths of the school district. With an expected 49,000 students, a jump of 3,000 more than last year, such growth also highlights other growing pains.
One of the key challenges many districts in Florida are facing is a teacher shortage. How are you dealing with that situation? Well, we're not immune to it. I mean, all school districts are facing that. We are right at about 100 vacancies total, and that includes instructional and non-instructional. I would say currently we have about 80 teachers, uh, classroom teachers that we're looking to fill. Uh, we are processing every day, and we have a game plan. That game plan also includes capital projects and mitigating the impact of lack of affordable housing has on recruitment. But at the fore of this academic year, what teachers can or can't teach in the classroom. So there's been a new directive from the state about AP psychology. Uh, and then there's also concerns about history uh, instructions. How are you navigating that issue? The DOE's stance on AP psych is that we can teach that course in its entirety and stay within the state laws. And so we believe in Sarasota that we also can do that as well. In Sarasota, Adoria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay. Good evening. Today, jurors agreeing with the Kowalski family that staff conduct was extreme and outrageous when dad Jack Kowalski took Maya to the ER in October 2016 only to have her taken into state custody and sheltered there kept away from her family for 87 days. We the jury return the following verdict. Claim one, false imprisonment, October 7th through October 13th, 2016, Maya Kowalski. A courtroom overrun by emotions as the six-person jury agreed with the family on all seven claims. The Johns Hopkins Paul Children's Hospital falsely imprisoned Maya Kowalski without legal authority under circumstances that were unreasonable and unwarranted between October 18th and October 20th, 2016. Yes. <laughs> they also found all children's hospital liable for malpractice, battery, the wrongful death of Maya's mother, Viata, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. In total, the jury awarding the family around $212 million in compensation, including for future economic loss, long-term trauma, and medical care. Based on Catherine Beattie's hugging, patting, kissing, and placing Maya Kowalski on her lap, $8 million. Lawyers for all children's hospitals say this case will have a chilling effect on mandatory reporters of child abuse. They disagree with the verdict and plan to pursue an appeal claiming clear and prejudicial errors throughout the trial and deliberate conduct by the plaintiff's counsel that misled the jury. Jury number one, is this your verdict? Yes, it is. And we have the full statement from All Children's Hospital on our website, 10tampabay.com. But the Kowalski family could also be getting more money. Right now, the judge is still discussing punitive damages, and we'll have details about that coming up tonight at 6. For now, live in Venice, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay. Why we tell the story? That's the question at the center of this award-winning Caribbean Calypso tale set in the early post-colonial French island of Antilles. It's a coming-of-age story of a dark-skinned young peasant girl named Timoon who falls in love with the light-skinned biracial son of a wealthy elite family. Colorism has been something that has been around for so long, and I have to work three times harder than someone maybe his color. Orphaned and adopted after a hurricane, Timun learns tough life lessons on her journey to discover love and purpose. Everyone is here for a reason. So to know that and put that inside of another little black girl somewhere, that you're here for a purpose and you're here for a reason, whatever that may be, that's something that can be a real takeaway from this show. Southwest Florida adores this space because it really helps the walls to fall down. We have an opportunity to brighten up our corner of the world and bring more understanding. For founder Nate Jacobs, the purpose of such a theater institution is not only to create spaces for artists of color, but to serve as a steward for such black-centered stories and history, often overlooked by mainstream institutions or inaccessible to smaller communities. I hear the conversations in the hallways. They say, oh my God, I feel at home at this theater. If we don't tell our stories, who will? Nobody else is responsible for keeping that cultural alive. We want to make people feel things, you know, they, mm -hmm. they should leave out of this theater feeling something. Something. And to answer the question why? Love, Love is, is why. why. Grief, Grief is, is why. why. Hope, Hope is why. why. 
faith is why you are why we tell the story into the music of the god we dance in sarasota aduria chumba tan tampa bay and the West Coast Black Theater Troupe has only five more showings of Once on this Island this week. Saturday afternoon's show is the only one that still has tickets available. You can find more on 10tampabay.com.